voice of God prod our hearing. Together, they invite us down into the waters of life where the Spirit flows. Remain standing for the opening hymn, Blessed Assurance. Jesus is mine. Savior, all day long. 
example of how everyone comes together to pray, regardless of your affiliation, your beliefs, regardless of your, your personal values, regardless the foundation to help this community and it wants to start out with just $2,500. That foundation we have is just a good example. So what does that mean? It's just a good example of the start and point of how you can bring prayer to the community and to the Lord. And we, where we should be a good example as we pray for our loved ones, right? And we just give thanks to God every day. I'll give you a homework assignment tonight. Tonight, before you go to bed, just think back of all the blessings that you got throughout the day. It could be the little things, just tiny things. It could be just someone greeting you this morning, just you getting up, being able to come to church. Sometimes if you can count the blessings you receive, you'll be surprised how many it adds up to. Sometimes before I go to bed, I try to reflect upon my day and the things that I started out and I prayer to pray for, whether it be getting me through a meeting or whether it be praying for someone that's sick. And I reflect to see what happens and that drives how many of your prayers are answered. Prayers doesn't mean that we're going to make you a millionaire tomorrow or you're not going to have trials in your life. God will help you get through those things and through your anger and carry you through. So as we pray, let's reflect upon some of the things we just discussed and those things of Lord. Let's bow our heads. God, God, now that we're on the other side of Christmas and all the decorations are taken down, all the gifts have been opened, several New Year's resolutions have already been broken. Help each of us to be steadfast, immovable, and unwavering in our faith. We pray for your grace, your mercy, and a blessing for a much better year than last year. Increase our ability to listen, to learn, and to understand your word. Open our hearts to receive it. Thank you for blessing our life with strength, peace, and joy. Guide each of us to live productive and joyful lives by drawing closer to you. May our words and our actions help each other to see you. Help the members of Buddenwood to be a model for others. May we talk the talk of faith and walk as Christians according to our mission statement. As the body of Christ, we the members of Buddenwood United Methodist Church and believe that it is our mission to be the bridge that links this church and this community together transferring lives to become what you have called us to be. Let today be the day that someone experience a life-changing miracle that would be a testimony that everyone can witness. Let this year be the year that we witness into the pandemic, the natural disasters, and social unrest. Major, may your angels protect us, guide our decisions, Open doors that need to be open and close those that need shutting. Help us to release things in our lives that are not aligned to your will and your purpose for us. Thank you for blessing this church, for blessing this pastor, blessing us in the past, blessing us in the present, and the blessings that we'll get from you in the future. Touch those who are listed on our sick and shut in. And I ask that you bless our pastor and put your protective armor on him. Bless our speaker today. Let his message inspire each of us. In your precious name, I pray. Amen. We move on in our service.
How many of you believe he's sweet? And you really know. And if we can do better than that. We don't want a golf clap today. We want to stand an ovation clap. This is our Super Bowl clap. Golf claps are gone. with a selection from our choir.
Um, every time, so I just waited to and just use the word glory. I echo when glory came out. That's when I thought I could get it right. But but on the other thing, he was looking back at me like I say, John, you better hum a little bit. <laughs> Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning will be read from, oh, do I have the right one? Is it Matthew? Yeah, you're right. I was reading from Matthew. Boy, I'm sorry, I got confused in my daily read. From Matthew chapter 3, verses 17 through 13, and it's entitled The Baptism of Jesus. You know, and I, and I got confused because this morning was along the same line, and it was about as Christians. You had to be ready for the unexpected. And the unexpected was when John had to baptize Jesus. So the two were aligned. So that's where I got a little bit confused. It reads, I'll be reading from, I'm sorry, can you please stand for the reading of the gospel? And I'll be reading from the NIV translation. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to baptize, to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. And then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and aligning on him, and a voice from heaven said, this is my son, whom with I am well pleased. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. As we prepare ourselves for our sermonic hymn, for our sermonic hymn, I had to laugh a little bit. Sometimes you mind the tan remind me when I used to work. <laughs> I used to have my HR manager sitting right there in front of me, and they'd be keeping me in line, giving me high-end signals and <laughs> stuff like that. Huh? How'd you get in? Because you did it too. <laughs> so, yeah, it's fine. I mean, it's, it's not like I'm only, I'm only teasing them. I'll tell you a little bit about our speaker of today, uh, Pastor Guy Reeves Jr. Pastor Guy Reeves Jr. is a senior member at Momentum Church in Wilmington, Delaware. He is passionately in love with Jesus. For 16 years, Pastor Reeves crisscrossed the globe, preaching the gospel and taking every opportunity to tell people about the love of Jesus Christ. Pastor Reeves presents the gospel in a unique and dynamic way that you're leaning in, holding on to every word that is spoken as it paints the beauty of the transforming, powerful, life-giving Word of God. He is compelled to make individuals aware that God is for them, and he has a specific plan and purpose for everyone's life. He's a family man, husband to Saleya Reeves, and father to Guy Reeves III and Landon Reeves. The next word you will hear after the sermonic selection will be from our speaker of the hour, Pastor Guy Reeves Jr.
Come on, let's celebrate the name of the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. Come on, we serve an awesome God, a God that rocks. Come on, that rules. Come on, come on. He sits high, but he looks low. Come on, anybody know we serve an awesome God? to be here. Uh, I'm excited to be here. Um, couldn't wait to come and share the word of the Lord uh, this morning. I'm, 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 I'm grateful uh, just for another opportunity to uh, just be in the presence of the Lord in the household of faith. And so we're excited. I know uh, for many of you, this is your first time probably uh, seeing me, my first time seeing you all. And I'm grateful that Pastor Lee uh, felt it not robbery to ask me to come and to share the word of the Lord. Can we just celebrate him in his absence? Come on, you have an awesome pastor. Uh, he's a, a prince and a scholar, and I'm grateful for him. We're, we're praying for him and the family, um, even through this time of transition. Um, yesterday, I was in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee, and uh, the kind of pastor you have, if I'd have told him that I had to uh, fly out and then fly back in by midnight, it would have worried him to death. And so he called me and I, I, I felt a little, I said, Lord, please forgive me. I'm not gonna answer his call right now <laughs> because if he knew that uh, I had an opportunity to be a part of a, a homegrown celebration for um, Evangelist Carter, who is the grandmother to the R&B singer Usher. And so, uh, but if I'd have told pastor that I got a call at midnight to leave 6 a.m., oh man, it would have put him into panic mode. And, uh, and so, you know, this is what we do. You know, we go and come back and different things. And so, so uh, at midnight, I landed about 1210 and uh, just grateful to be here this morning. Amen. Amen. And so we, we honor the Lord. Let's get right into the word of the Lord. I mean, thank God for my brother, Joe Bree, over there in that organ. That's why I had that little moment where I smiled. I said, he really playing that organ. Praise God. <laughs> and so glad to see all of you again, saints and friends. Um, let's turn our Bibles to uh, James chapter 1, verse 22. And when you have it, scream out, I got it. If you need some time, say, hold up, wait a minute. It's a very familiar passage of scripture. And, uh, then I'm going to ask you to jump over to another familiar passage of scripture, Psalms 23. We all there, James 1 and 22. Amen. I don't know if it's a custom for you to stand for the reading of the word of the Lord. If you're able to, please let's stand. Hallelujah. It says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves 
Let's jump to Psalms 23. This is where we're going to take off this morning. It's very familiar to the pastor. Many of us can quote it without reading it. And some of us, we ought not try. We better just read what's there. Praise God. <laughs> some of you miss, we miss Sunday school too many times. Praise God. All right, let's read together. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We declare that your word is our final authority. And Father, we thank you, God, that whatever your word says, we're going to become. Father, we just ask that you would bless not just uh, your word, but bless the hearers of your word, that we can be doers of your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everybody say amen. 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 Hallelujah. I have a, a different message coming from a different approach. I know it's a very familiar passage of scripture, um, but I love um, what you all had tagged uh, this service and this year for, the year of purpose. Somebody say year of purpose. And I believe that the best way to go into uh, not just a year of purpose, but what purpose is, is by acknowledging that the Lord is your shepherd. Somebody say the Lord is my shepherd. Those of you that are taking notes, I want you to write this down. And let's give a great big God bless you to those that are watching via stream this morning. Come on, we, we honor the Lord for all of the saints and friends that are watching. Um, I want to start off by saying every, um, every world is divided into kingdoms. And every kingdom uh, is divided into realms. Every ram is divided into levels, and every level is divided into doors. I'll say it again. Every kingdom is divided into uh, realms. Every realm is divided into levels, and every levels are divided into doors. The Bible says that your gift makes room for you, right? And so the way that you unlock your doors is through your gift. Uh, some of you say, if it's a year of purpose, what's my gift? What's my spiritual gift? That's a good question. But it's a question that you got to ask God what your gifting is. Um, I will say many of your gifts or passions is things that you love doing. Um, have you ever seen people who are just nice and their gift is uh, just being nice? You know, they, they, they know how to brighten up anybody's day. Like, you know, regardless of where I go, uh, we could be in the supermarket. Some people are always just telling me what they got going on in their life, and I, I don't even ask how they're doing. You, you hear what I'm saying? And, and they just start telling me. And they say, I don't know why I'm telling you this. And my wife looks over at me and she says, I know why. And so my point is that the gift comes out naturally. Uh, wherever you are, even if you're in a bad season of your life, your gift still operates. And so the way you open up doors uh, is through your gift. Somebody say, through my gift. And so when I read the scripture, it's very uh, prophetic and it's very true because I believe um, that when you say the Lord is my shepherd, uh, you're saying that he's my covering. He's, he's what covers or governs my life. He, he's what leads my life. Do you feel what I'm saying? Um, and so, so, so those that are taking notes, I want you to put this down. Every person needs a tree. Somebody say every person needs a tree. The reason you need a tree is because a tree represents a covering. A tree represents uh, like what a pastor would be. And I believe this, that in order to get over what you're called to get over, you got to first get under what you're called to get under. I'll say it again. In order for you to get over what you're called to get over, you got to first get under what you're called to get under. The Bible talks about how Elijah in scripture uh, was looking for a, a place of shade in the noontime. And so a tree just not represents a covering, but it represents shade. So when the sun is hot and when life is burning, come on, and things is getting hotter and hotter and out of control, you need shade as protection. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. And so that tree represents protection. 
Why? Because God has called everybody here to, to reproduce, to produce. You hear what I'm saying? To, 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 to bring something, to, to bring the best out of you. Come on. That even in, in, in our worst seasons, that we always bring the best out of us, right? And so he's telling us that in this season, that if you can get connected to the tree, that you can get connected, come on, to the tree of life, the tree that, that keeps you going. Come on, the tree that protects you, the tree that gives you shade, that blocks all the hot sun. Come on, and the things in your life that are hotter and hot, that makes things hotter and hotter, that quenches your ambitions. If you can get under a tree, then you'll be protected. And what I love about this Psalms 23 scripture is because it's so many truths there. And what I love about how even the songwriter begins to write it. Somebody say, sing, David. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He says, now that I know that I'm connected to a covering, now that I know that I have a shepherd, come on, now that I have a tree, something that covers, that gives me shade, he says, I have no wants. <laughs> He says, he says, I shall not what? Want. It didn't say he didn't have needs. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Come on. He said, I have no wants. In other words, my desires match his desires. See, what I found out in my life, in my Christian walk with God, is that if I allow the Lord to lead me, my desires will start lining up with his. And so there be no wants in my life because my, this, come on, come on, that whatever I need, whatever I want, he shall supply it. Do you hear what I'm saying? And so I ain't got to aimlessly run after things. Come on, and tirelessly try to put myself into position. Like I told you last night, I get a call uh, uh, the night before at midnight to leave six in the morning to be on the stage. Y'all know what I'm saying? With people that probably has more influence, come on, more recognition. But God knew that it was somebody that was born from Wilmington, Delaware. Y'all know what I'm saying? That has an assignment on his life. To put them in places with people. Do you hear what I'm telling you? And that's why I understand that you don't have to run after things when God is your shepherd. Come on, you ain't got to self-promote. Y'all ain't talking to me. You ain't, come on. I, I, listen, if you ain't got no Instagram or Facebook page, if you ain't got a website or TV ministry, God will make sure that your voice is heard in places it need to be heard in. He'll make sure that whatever you need, that he will fulfill, fulfill that need and facilitate your need. Come on, regardless of how overlooked you may think you are. Somebody say he's my shepherd. He's my shepherd. Then it says, he says, he maketh me lie down in green pastures. I love this part of the text because he said he maketh me lie down. That means there's a forced compliance there. That means that, that I, sometimes I lay in places that I shouldn't lay in. Come on, sometimes I lay places that, or, or hang out places that I shouldn't hang out in. Hang out with individuals. He said, but he maketh me lie down in green pastures. Now the reason I love this verse is because he says green pastures. He says, he makes me lie down in places that are fruitful. Places that are prosperous. Y'all better catch this in the spirit. Come on, places that grow me, places that develop me, places that, that equip me. He make me lie down in places that can feed me. Oh, uh, come on, come on. Not places that are dried up, not places that there's drought there. He said, he make it me lie down in, he make me get comfortable in prosperity. Come on, this ain't no prosperity message, but I just want you to catch this as we go into a new year, that he makes me lie down in places that things aren't hard and things aren't, aren't hard to get and things aren't hard to gather. He makes me lie down in places that things, come on, can nourish my body. This is your season of nourishment. Somebody say my season of nourishment. Then it says, he leadeth me beside the still waters. Now, I love this because many times when you're talking about the still waters, there's things that are happening under the surface that we may not see on top. Right? I, another passage of scripture, David says, he leads me to a brook when he's up against Goliath. Because what I love about it, he says that when you're in warfare, when you're in fight mode, I got to lead you to a place that things are rushing. Come on, that things are, are crashing. You hear what I'm saying? Because there's going to be enough encroaching there that rocks are developed, that, that you have what you need at that place, right? But in this text, he says, I'm leading you to still waters. In other words, you ain't got to fight to get what you need. Y'all ain't talking to me. Come on. You, you, you ain't got to struggle for it. Come on. You, you ain't got to go through all kind of hardships and things to get what you need. He said, if you let me lead you, I'm going to make you lie down in green pastures, and I'm going to lead you to still waters. My next point is that every person needs a river. 
<laughs> every person needs a tree is number one. The second is every person needs a river, a place where I can go and replenish. Come on, a place that I can go and draw from. Do you hear what I'm saying? Many of us, for years, we have operated on empty and operated depleted. But God said, I'm leading you to steel waters, places that there's enough, come on, nourishment and enough things that you can find there. Come on, to help you on this walk. Glory to God. Yeah, yeah. Then it says, he restored my soul. He leaded me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Then it says, yea, though, and I'm going to go fast because we got to get out here. Yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death, I will what? Fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. The beginning of the text, he tells you he's with you because he's your shepherd. Then in the middle, because sometimes we lose it in the middle. Do you hear what I'm saying? He says, he says I'm with you. In other words, you're going to go through things that other people die from. Come on. Uh, you, 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 you're going to see things that take other people out. He said, but you're going to walk through it. Y'all, come on, all to celebrate God. That even after three years of COVID, y'all don't hear what I'm saying, four years of COVID, that God says, you're going to walk through, come on, some things that affected other people. Do you hear what I'm saying? He says that you fear no evil. Why? Because I'm with you. But what I love about the valleys of the shadows of death, it's a place of echoes. Talks about how in Jerusalem, they got peaks that go up and peaks that go down. Right. And so David is writing a real story. He's not just writing a song. He's writing a real life experience. Somebody say, same, David. He says, as I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death, I fear no evil because I realize who's on my side. Come on. Oh, y'all, come on. You got to catch it. I realize who's with me. I realize who's walking through this with me. So when David's talking about the valleys of the shadows of death, he's talking about a real depiction of people that's dying above him and under him. But he says, I'm walking through what's taking them out. Y'all don't hear what I'm telling you. Come on. That's the privilege. That's the honor. Come on. That's the kind of favor that's on your life that God said, I allow you to go through things and come out of things that other people didn't make it out. Come on. I've allowed you, come on, to go through stuff that some people are able to turn them upside down. But when you went through it, I've given you wisdom and knowledge and strength and favor. Come on. That I walk with you through it. That I sustained you through it. Come on. That I kept your mind in it hallelujah that I kept your heart in the midst of it he says I'm gonna walk through with you and so David's going through these valleys of shadows of death and he's seeing real 3d uh, come on he's seeing the images on the, the the mountains on the side of him do you hear what I'm saying that's being casted that shows that up top of me that there's carriage robbers that is, that come on that are murdering the people that are right up top of me or right below me, I see it happening. But he said, when I walk through, I ain't going to fear no evil. He said, why? You know, the old, we used to say, because we got a testimony. Come on, how good he's been. A testimony of how he brought us over, right? He said, I got a testimony. That's my rod and my staff. He said, I got a support system. Why? Because every shepherd had a rod and a staff. And on that rod and that staff had the markings. Y'all ain't talking to me. David was able to mark that when I was a little boy, come on, I had a hundred sheep. One left to fold, right? He said, left me with 99. He said, but I went after the one, so I lost nothing. Come on. And those were his reminders. I just come to testify to you this morning that God has sent you some reminders in this season that irregardless of what you're going through, that you don't have to walk through it alone. Come on. That you're not by yourself. That you've got some reminders. Your rod and your staff. I know you keep talking about who left your life, but can I help you here? That anything that the storm took is a sign that you didn't need it anyway. Come on. Anything that the fire burnt up was a sign that you did not need it anyway. God said, the only thing you needed in this season was me to walk with you. And is there anybody here that's excited that God is walking with you, that he never left you that he never forsaken you come on that he's with you always come on you ought to get excited about the fact I know some people turned their backs on you I know some people walked away but you ought to get excited come on that that you serve the kind of God that, that says I'm going to make sure that you make it out of whatever you're going through I'm going to make sure come on that, that you come out of whatever your situation that I brought you to he said I'm going to walk with you is there anybody here come on that, that 
to give God a praise that says, God, thank you for walking with me. You walk with me all through 2022. Come on. With all the folks that I lost. With all the things that I've lost. Come on. All the stuff that I endured. You kept walking with me. And thanks be to God. Come on. That we serve the kind of God that I continue walking with you. That's why the songwriter says he walks with me. And he talks to me. And he tells me, come on, that I am his own. Is there anybody here for the next 20 seconds that I give God a praise that says thank you for walking with me. Come on, thank you for leading me. Thank you, come on, for speaking to me. Thank you, God, that when I couldn't pick up a phone, you were still right there beside me. That you never left me nor forsaken me. Thank you, God, that you will be with me always. Oh, y'all, come on, come on. We serve that kind of God that keeps on walking. Come on. That even when you want to stop and give up, he says, you can't give up now. I'm walking with you. Glory to God. Scripture says that he fears no evil. I promise you I'm finished. He fears no evil because he's with me. My last point. This is a season of echoes. He's in the valleys of shadows of death. And if he says something, they'll be able to locate him. But also, if he says something, he'd be able to hear himself. Y'all know what I'm saying? Because the density of his words will be able to bounce back in the season. God said, the reason why it's important that you realize that it's a season of echoes is because this season, I'm allowing some things to bounce back and hit your life. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. What I mean is, Prayers that you pray for other people. He said in this season, it's going to bounce back and hit your own life. Come on. Things that you spoke, encouraging words that you spoke to others. God said, it's going to bounce back and hit your life. That's why the scripture says that in one text, David runs up in the cave. The Bible says that while he's in this cave, that the whole mouth of the cave is webbed by spiders. So when the enemy is on his trail, he runs in this cave. That's why the scripture says he makes a way of escape for him. The Bible says that the mouth of the cave is webbed as if nobody entered that cave for 600 or so years. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. But the Bible says that David's in there. He's hiding out and his enemy is on his trail. And they walk right past and say it's, he, can't, he couldn't have gone in there. Nobody entered that cave. Not knowing that God, come on, y'all ain't talking to me, that God was making a way of, I come to tell you that he's made a way for you. Glory to God. That irregardless of what you've gone through and what you're going through, come on, God has made a way for you. Hallelujah. Scripture says that when he comes out of this cave, David pulls out his pen again. I'll finish. He pulls out this pen again. Somebody say, same David. He says he prepares a table for me. And what? The presence of my enemies. That means he goes in one way, but he comes out unrecognizable. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. That now his enemy, that's a sign, come on, to capture him and to kill David, is now feeding David. Scripture says he comes down with a full beard. The Bible says that when he comes out of that cave with a full beard, that now they find pity. So the same king that gave him assignment to kill him is now feeding him. I come to tell you that those, y'all ain't talking to me, come on, those that was trying to sabotage you, those that was trying to be against you in this season is about to feed you. They're about to prefer you first. Glory to God. And then he says, he anointed my head with oil. So what? My cup runneth over. This is the season as you walk into your year of purpose that God give you another anointing. Hallelujah. That he anoints you again. Do you hear what I'm saying? And why did he anoint? The scripture says, and I promise you this is my last close. You know, preachers, the first two is just to set you up. Glory to God. It's my last close. The scripture says that sheep would take their head, and because they didn't have fingers, that these little flies would go up their nose. And I'm not trying to gross you out. Would go up the sheep's nose, right? Because they couldn't get them out, they would take their head, and they start ramming their head against the post. So for some temporary relief, I'm now causing permanent pain. Y'all ain't talking to me. 
for some, some, some temporary, come on, come on, come on, some kind of uh, 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 just help or, or, or remedy. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm causing permanent damage because I keep ramming my head against the post. Then the shepherd gets so, so, so in tune with God that he takes out some anointing oil that got myrrh and frankincense in it. And not only does he take the oil and put it over the sheep's head, but he also takes the oil and applies it to the top lip. So every time the sheep would breathe in and breathe out, it's burning out flies. Come on, I promise I'm finished. And that's what's happening in this year of purpose for you. That God said, if you could just continue to breathe, <laughs> y'all ain't talking to me. If you continue, come on, to be you. If you continue, come on, to get up. Listen, I know people say, I, I, I got up on the wrong side of the bed. But, but after all we experienced and all we've seen and all the people we've lost over these years, any side of the bed that you get up is the right side of the bed. Come on, y'all ain't talking to me. <laughs> and so, so he says, if you can just continue to breathe, I'll work out all the small stuff. These flies, you know, they say the lifespan of a gnat is 21 days. As I realized in my spiritual walk that if I stop swatting at it, it's going to die anyway. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. Why? Because it's my year of purpose, so I can't be swatting at stuff that's going to die anyway. I'm not wasting no more energy. Come on, I'm not wasting no more time dealing with unnecessary drama and foolishness. All I'm going to do is wake up and breathe. Y'all ain't talking to me. Come on. I'm going to wake up and be anointed. Come on, as God is anointing me. You hear what I'm saying? That all I got to do is breathe and let those other things just burn off my life. And that's where we are as a church, as a body of Christ. You hear what I'm saying? God said, I'm going to lead you. And I'm going to work out everything for you. Hallelujah. That's why the scripture says, he says he's going to make every crooked place straight. Come on, that means he's going to work out the details. Y'all ain't talking to me. He going to figure it out. Come on, you, you wasted enough time crying at night. Come on, enough time frustrated over folks that did you wrong. When this whole thing was orchestrated by God. He said, if you just continue to breathe. Somebody say, all I got to do is breathe. Ah, come on, all I got to do is breathe. That's why, that's why the greatest prerequisites to praise is the fact that you got life in your body. He says, let everything that has breath. Oh, come on, I, I know you thought it was your ability. Come on, and you see all them, them uh, I don't know if you watch social media, them shouting videos and stuff, and they be shouting and going, no, I'm all for it. Don't get me wrong, I'm just saying <laughs> that your biggest prerequisites to praise is the fact that you got breath in your body. He said, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let's stand to our feet. You may be in here and you said, it's my year of purpose, but I need to be like David and get some anointing on my life. Get some oil on my life. That whatever I'm dealing with, come on, that I don't have to deal with it alone. That I don't have to come on, keep coming up with strategies and keep coming up with methods. Do you hear what I'm saying? But I can let him lead my life. And if you're in this place and you desire prayer for anything, whether it's healing, whether it's anything you desire in prayer for, I want you, uh, as we do the invitation, only you can come. We're going to pray for you. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for you that the anointing flow. He says, he anointed my head with oil and let my cup run over. I come to tell you, your cup about to run over. Come on, I got two people that received it. I said, your cup is about to run over. Hallelujah. That's your portion. That's your portion. That's what the Bible says. And I believe that whatever it says, I become. Do you hear what I'm saying? Your cup is about to run over. If you're in this place and you want to give your life to the Lord and you want to rededicate your life, this is your time to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you're in this place and you want to make button wood your church. I started off by saying every person needs a tree. That means I need a place of connection. And if I'm going to get over what I'm called to get over, I got to get under what I'm called to get under. And if you're here and you want to make this your place where you say, Lord, I'm going to be dedicated and committed. And I'm going to be faithful to you like you're faithful to me. This is your time to come. The doors of the church is open. So three things we're praying. If you need prayer, you want to give your life to the Lord and if you want to 
uh, join this church, I need you to come. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. 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 The altar is open. It's available. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some more of you, you all, are, come on, make the decision. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Come on, this altar's full this morning. We ought to praise God. Hallelujah. And what I love about it, we got, uh, we got women, but we got more men at the altar. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's the way to start a year. Father, I thank you for these individuals that are here at this altar. You know what they're in need of. You know, Father, what they are standing proxy for. We pray for them, Father, as individuals that you would touch them from the crown of their heads down to the soles of their feet. That even if they need healing in their body, we declare and decree in this room that their entire body be healed. We tell the pain to go now in the name of Jesus. Sickness, go now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you, God, that even as you're touching them, as you're anointing them here at this altar, we thank you that their cup runs over. That whatever they stand in need of, Father, that you supply that need. That need has met their match today. Hallelujah. Because we know that there's nothing impossible with you. And Father, as we stand even proxy in faith for their family, Father, that's connected to them, we declare that their entire family be saved, that their entire family be healed, that their entire family, come on, that breakthrough be their portion. And I thank you, Father, that you said in your word that whatever crooked place be made straight, we thank you, Father, that you're working out the details. <laughs> we don't need to know, Father, we know that you're working it out. And so we hand it over to you because you're our shepherd. And Father, I thank you, God, for the, even the persons, Father, that's coming to rededicate their lives. God, we thank you that 2023 would be the beginning of the rest of their life that it will be the best of their life, Father. I thank you, God, that, you, that you're so amazing with how your word is performed in us. You don't just offer us more time, but you allow us to do t more with the time we have left. And Father, we make a declaration that this is gonna be the best of our lives, that, that people around us will get the best of who we are. We're not gonna let little things agitate us and diminish who you are to us because you're such a big and good God. And Father, we thank you, God, that even as we rededicate our lives, we dedicate, Father, our actions and our faith, Father. God, we, we're sorry where we, where we bared, where we, where we may have just gotten frustrated or whatever it may be, Father, but God, we pray, God, that you will be the center of our lives, that you'll be our shepherd, that you'll continue to lead us and guide us. And Father, we even make a commitment to this church, Father. We're going to stand, Father, in the spot that you bless us in. We're going to stand in the spot, Father, that we're connected to. And Father, we're going to be all that you've called for us to be here. And we thank you, God, that even the spirit of multiplication will hit this church like never before. That this cup will run over even with people, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, that you're letting people know that this is a lighthouse, that this is a place of refuge and a place of care. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray everybody say amen, amen. and amen again. Come on, let's celebrate the Lord one more time. Hallelujah. Come on, we can do better than that. If you receive the word, let's celebrate the Lord. Amen. Amen. How many enjoyed the message? Hallelujah. We started out introducing Pastor Reeves by saying he'll paint the beauty of a transforming, powerful, living, life-giving word of God. Did he not do that? Wow. Uh, he's also compelled to make individuals aware that God is for them. Did he not do that? Amen. Everybody needs a tree. Hallelujah. And everybody needs it with them. The Lord is my shepherd. Hallelujah. And also, this is our year of purpose, and our cup will overflow. Hallelujah. Let's give him another round of applause. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Offering time. Officers will come forward.
God of water that cleans us, the land that feeds us, and the air that allows us to breathe your spirit in and out of us. You claim us in your baptism, but too few of us even remember our own baptism. And if we remember or imagine our baptism, we too rarely grasp its meaning and power. As we present our tithes and offerings and worship and witness Christ's baptism once again, may we remember that the water we were like Christ, commissioned to go, teach, preach, heal, and even take up the cross. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let the church say amen. 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 And amen. Let's give a praise clap to our Heavenly Father for a beautiful service this morning. So we, we use the theater in the Duke building. But it's been COVID, I feel like we're going online. Pastor Reeves. Mm, mm, wow. Mm. Praise God. I tell you, I, I, I just love it when the Lord has just spoken to somebody. And you know they know what they're talking about, and they're true. Wow. And you can just see the love just coming from you today wow. for the God. folks of Buttonwood Church that you have never even met before. Right. We thank you. Wow, thank we you thank all. you, and we thank you. Thank you. You see, our pastor called me first thing this morning <laughs> as I'm wondering who was calling me before 7 a.m., but he was calling because he loves the church family so much. He wanted to say good morning to you today. He is on a flight right now coming back from Tampa wow. where he went to visit his niece and his grandnieces. Them chicks wore him out. <laughs> <laughs> but prayerfully that he will arrive uh, a little bit later this morning. But did he not bring a wonderful representative of Jesus Christ to us this day? Wow, praise God. You know, we, we can't pay you, but we know that the Lord has got you. Absolutely. So we're just giving you just a little donation here just to, for you to keep preaching the Lord's word. Wow, thank you so much. And starting us off, because if you have not been to service the past couple Sundays or watched on Facebook or live streaming, our purpose, our theme for this year is about purpose. And did not this brother start us off wonderfully for this year? So this is just a little thank you that we love you. 
Thank you so Thank much. You so much. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And, and uh, we talked to Pastor Sean because this cannot be your last time <laughs> coming back to Buttonwood. Amen. 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 To just briefly go into our announcements, first I'm just going to briefly go over the uh, what's listed in your uh, bulletin as the insert. Um, one is a uh, letter that, of course, if you do not already know, uh, we're having Men's Day again, and this will be the first time since COVID. So we're already praying ahead for our men as they come and have uh, annual Men's Day this year. Uh, Reverend uh, Darius Brown, who's also a senator for the, in the state of Delaware, will be here. He's already blessed us once before. Uh, he came and preached, but he will be here for the Men's Day a service along with the um, MOT uh, choir uh, in there. So please come out. But this is a, a letter just so that you will know what's going on as a reminder. that And that service will be at 11 a.m. on the first Sunday on February the 5th. And the theme is Men on the Move. And I can say we have men on the move. Just like Pastor was saying, we had more men up here at the altar because these men are already praying about the event that's coming up. Amen? Amen. 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 And with that, Reggie does want to meet with the men uh, immediately after service. On the other side is Pastor Sean's time off. Um, you've heard the word sabbatical listed. However, under the United Methodist Church, it does not require, uh, meet the requirement for sabbatical. This is called a time off for him to grieve, to regroup himself, and just have a time for Sean. Amen? Amen. So we want you to keep him still in prayer along Amen. with his entire family. Uh, he will be home here for just a couple days, and then he's going to see his daughter and his other two grandkids in uh, North Carolina. So by the time he comes back to us, he's probably going to be glad <laughs> after these kids finish wearing him out. But listed in there um, are um, talking about the different things that are coming up, again, with Men's Day being on the first Sunday. In February, our communion service will, again, be on the second Sunday, like we normally have it, at 9 o'clock. So uh, if there is any type of pastoral care, please make sure you're reaching out to me. Um, so that I can then inform uh, Reverend Kevin Benjamin, who is our pastoral care elder pastor that will be helping us out. Um, and so uh, my number is listed um, on here. If you need anything, please feel free to reach out, and I'll make sure that I'm connecting with the correct people to get with you. And also with just saying that, I, we definitely want to keep up in prayer. Um, Sister Rochelle Drummond had a stroke. Mm. And but um, I'm going to have Charles just kind of tell us at what stage she is um, right now. But we want to keep her and him as the caretaker up in prayer. So, Charles, would you like to say anything before I go on with the bullet uh, with the announcements? Of course, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, again, yes, we'll, we'll definitely be keeping her in prayer. And then, Charles, make sure you and I hook up after service, if you would, please. Okay. Um, and there, also wanted to mention just down at the bottom of that for Pastor Sean's uh, time off, um, and I wanted to put in what Reverend Archie had listed for you folks. And he says, as our district superintendent, Reverend Archie, stated, we thank you, meaning Buttonwood Church, and the leaders of Buttonwood for your compassion towards Pastor Sean in this difficult situation. So a lot of us have been through that. Every one of us have had people pass in our lifetime. So we know that we need to give him the grieving time in there. But please, please keep him lifted up. Uh, in your prayers. Amen? Amen. 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 Just briefly on the announcements again, uh, um, Reggie will be meeting with the men after service on tomorrow at 6 o'clock p.m. We'll be having the uh, choir rehearsal and then next uh, Saturday at 11 a.m. Uh, to noon, uh, the United Women of Faith will be meeting here at the church. Amen? Amen. 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 And again, as you can see on there, special thank you to Pastor Guy Reeves for oh, wow. Momentum Church. So again, thank you so much thank for you. blessing us this morning. Amen. 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 Um, there's no, uh, yes, please. Amen. 
Are there any other announcements that I do not have? Okay, with that, we ask you to please stand. We're gonna have the ushers come forward, extinguish out the candles, and then we'll have the benediction by Pastor Guy Reeves. Hallelujah. All hearts and mind. Father, we thank you for this awesome time that you gathered us together for purpose and for assignment. God, we thank you, God, that we're just not hearers of your word, but doers of your word. So we thank you for activation this week, God, that we start this year off as a year of purpose, Father, and a year of fulfillment. I thank you, Father, that you're keeping us covered, that you'll watch over us, God, even those that are sick and shut in. Father, I pray that your word will go out to them, Father, and that it would heal them touch their entire bodies, Father. God, I thank you, God, that you would keep us, that you would protect us, that you would bring us back to this particular place at your particular time, Father. God, that you'll watch over us during this week. And Father, we felt not to give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you. 